Hi everyone, welcome to 3.1, Europeans Explore the East. This is a PowerPoint with some pictures that goes along with the guided reading worksheet that you have for this section. So as we go through, please fill in notes to answer the questions that come up as we go along. First question we're going to talk about is what technolo technological advances made possible the age of exploration for Europeans? There's a couple things that came along that the Europeans um, gained access to certain technologies from other cultures or invented themselves that helped them to be able to sail uh, and explore by sea much further than they had before. The first thing uh, that is one of the most important ones is a caravel. Now this is a type of ship pictured in the upper right there. Um, this type of ship was much different than earlier ships that the Europeans had been using. The earlier ships only allowed them to go along the coast, but the caravel is much more sturdy, was stronger, and it could sail much further away, uh, deeper into the, into the seas. Secondly is triangular sails. These different types of sails allowed the Europeans to actually sail against the wind. Instead of just waiting for the right winds, they could channel winds in different directions to help propel their ships. Another example is the astrolabe. That's actually pictured down um, in the bottom here. Um, you can see someone looking through the astrolabe with the horizon that could help them figure out their location and pinpoint where they were to help them navigate and decide where they needed to go. And then finally, the other picture there that looks quite familiar is a compass, a magnetic compass, to help them understand which direction they were headed in. Now, another question that comes up is, um, after Columbus um, was able to, with the sponsorship of Spain, was able to sail to the Americas, what were some of the immediate and long-term outcomes um, of this voyage that he made? Well, first of all, an immediate outcome is that there were increased tensions between Spain and Portugal because both of those countries wanted the land that was in the Americas. Both of them had been uh, exploring the different areas and now were kind of in competition with each other to gain those lands and have access to those riches. A long-term consequence would be increased interest in Europe to colonize the Americas. Now that more people knew that there were other lands out there that they could navigate to with this new technology they had, they were all interested in getting rich, spreading Christianity, and gaining fame for their countries. Here's a uh, just a very brief uh, map of different territories that different European powers controlled. Um, notice in the South America, mostly you have Portuguese and Spanish, but there's a few Dutch territories, uh, a few even French territories in that area. If you look up in North America, um, the British <coughs> are taking lar large chunks of Canada and some of the East Coast. The Spanish are coming up Central America through, Lat uh, through Mexico, and then the French have a huge chunk uh, initially in parts of North America. What were the most important results of the Treaty of Tordesillas? Well, the treaty, as you read in your textbook, basically was between uh, Spain and France, uh, and it was basically orchestrated by Alexander VI, one of the popes, and it created the line of demarcation. Now, when they made this, they still weren't really sure where they had discovered it, as they sailed west. Some thought it was in uh, Asia. Some thought that... Uh, Asia was still further away, <clears throat> but basically the line said, you know, from this, from one side of this line, the western side, the Spanish get that territory, and from the eastern part of that line, the Portuguese get that territory. And you can see on the map there, there was a slight uh, re revision. They changed it a little bit because the Portuguese weren't happy with the initial line, but they agreed on that. And once they had that agreement, Portugal and Spain sort of took it easy from each other. They weren't as, uh, relations weren't as tense. The Pope was really big on this because they were, these were both very Catholic countries. He did not want them uh, as rivals fighting against each other. He wanted them as partners to convert as many people to Christianity as possible. And this also opened up the Americas to colonization. Now that the Portuguese and Spain didn't have to worry about each other, they could concentrate on conquering, taking land, uh, and eventually stealing a lot of the riches from the Americas. Notice uh, something interesting to keep in mind. It was a, a pope 
and rulers from European countries, no one really asked or spoke to any of the native inhabitants in the Americas. And this is a pattern that we'll see later on as well. How did Portugal benefit from Vasco da Gama's voyage to Calicut? So, first of all, what you need to realize is that um, goods from China, goods from India were very valuable in Europe. They were rare, they were hard to find, they were highly sought after. And so, once the Gama found a direct way to get to India, um, this this route that he would take, that, that the Portuguese could now take to get goods from that part of the world, basically made uh, things a lot cheaper and a lot easier. Now look at the map that I have here. This is a map of some of the trade routes in the past. Some of them are known as the Silk Road, and you can see the pass go from China, sometimes from India, sometimes they go by sea as well, but eventually most of them make their way up to the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula and this area right here, which is modern day Turkey. That's where the Ottomans live. And as these goods pass through here, the Ottomans would trade them sometimes with merchants from Venice. Some occasionally they were even carried inland, but usually with the merchants from Venice and also the merchants from Turkey, every time those goods passed through another trader's hands, they would add up on the price because they were trying to make a profit too. And so this is kind of what I'm noting as the middleman here. Goods from China and India, they start here, but they have to go through this Ottoman Empire and the, and the Venetians, the people from Venice, as the middleman, and they hike up the price of the goods so they're more expensive. So for the Portuguese, once they're able to get a direct sea route, they're able to cut out that middleman and make huge profits from that trade. And you can see here, instead of goods having to travel all through land, all through Turkey, and then get to Italy, and then to the rest of Western Europe, the Portuguese now have this direct route to get right to Calicut, to get to other parts of India, to get those goods, those spices, those cloths, that China that they wanted to be able to buy and sell for much cheaper prices. Okay, why did Spain set up trading posts? in Asia. Well, first of all, the Portuguese were starting to dominate the Asian trade and the Spanish didn't really want them to get so far ahead. They knew that the Portuguese were making lots of profits and the Spanish wanted a piece of that, um, as did other European powers as well. Um, and so, as part of being able to gain that power and that wealth, they wanted to be able to set up their own trading empire. And this is King Philip here. He's actually, the, uh, he wasn't the king yet of Spain, but he's actually, he, when he was the prince, he's the one that the Philippines were named after in his honor. How did the Dutch gain control of much of the Indian Ocean trade? Well, the Dutch had a kind of strategic uh, path that they took to gain control there. First, they built up their navy. They became a naval power. They had a large amount of ships, um, trading vessels that they'd be able to use as a resource to invest in ocean trade. Secondly, they allied with England um, because Portugal had been controlling much of the uh, trade in the East Indies around Indonesia, different parts of India, um, all the way up even towards uh, Eastern Europe further north uh, and so to break that Portuguese control the Dutch teamed up with England so having an ally to fight against their common enemy and then later as the Portuguese were kind of beaten back the Dutch turned on the English um, they were no longer allies and and drove them out of the region in certain areas and so the Dutch had a strong trade empire here's a painting of uh, one of the Javanese princes surrendering to the Dutch. You can see the Dutch flag flying over top of that building and then it looks as though a Dutch naval commander or an army commander there calling the shots while the uh, natives basically bow down and, and realize that they've been defeated. How did the European battles for the Indian Ocean trade affect the people of Asia before the 19th century? We're kind of cutting it off here up into the 1800s. How did that affect people before? Well, initially, a lot of port cities are colonized, right? So if you're a port city, if you're a city on the ocean, on the coast, you may be affected by this. The Europeans would come in and take over. You'd have to do what they said. A lot of times they had stronger military technology, and they're able to kind of impose their will on the local inhabitants along the port cities. However, 
Most Asian people that lived in the interior, as in not along the coast, but further away from the coast, inside the interior of the country, they had little interaction or and there were little effects uh, towards them by this European trade. Remember, this is before the 19th century. So here's a map that shows you some of the overall colonies, and you can see, um, especially around Africa, parts of Asia, the colonies aren't in far into the interior and we can actually do another zoom in map here this is India and you can see from the key um, there were lots of English French Dutch uh, Portuguese even some Danish settlements all along India in these areas but if you look at where all these settlements are again they're just on the coast and so to answer that question the people on the coast on the ports on the port cities, they were definitely affected by European colonization and European rule, but the people in the interior, uh, especially in Asia, weren't very affected during this time period. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to discussing these things with you in class tomorrow.